In this video, we're going to start looking at complex numbers at FP2. In FP1, we met the Cartesian form of a complex number, and we wrote that as z was equal to x plus i y. This is what we call the Cartesian form. We're going to now look at two other forms of writing complex numbers. So this is the Cartesian form. And I'll put a box around that as we will come back to that shortly. We saw that we could express uh, complex numbers in Cartesian form using an argon diagram. So for example, if I, and I'll put some points out on here, if I put a point out here, let's put one just here, and we had one just there, and then we had one here, and then we had one over here, we could now label these up. So for example, this might be 4 plus 3i. This one might be 1 minus 2i. So 1 minus 2i. This one might be minus 1 minus 4i. So minus 1 minus 4i. And then this one might be now uh, minus 3 plus i. Again, those are very sketchy. So minus 3 plus i. So we use an argon diagram to write complex numbers in Cartesian form. The second form we're going to look at now is polar form. And we can express a complex number in polar form by writing z is equal to r cos theta plus i sine theta. And this is what we call the polar form. So let's write polar form. And we'll put a box around that. We need to establish a couple of um, bits of information regarding the polar form of a complex number. Firstly, we've got this r. r is the absolute value of the modulus of z. So r is equal to the modulus of z. We can find that by taking the square root of x squared plus y squared. So when we hear of this, we often hear this as mod arg form or modulus argument form. So mod arg form. Theta is the argument. So theta now, and this is uh, given as the inverse, so inverse tan of y over x. And our principal value, this is what we call our principal value of the argument or our principal argument. And this is given where theta is going to be strictly greater than minus pi, but in turn less or equal to pi. And we will have multiples of 2 pi on top of our principal argument. And we'll look at a quick example of this shortly. In fact, we'll look at one now. Let's just start with something really straightforward. I'm going to put this point up here, and I'm going to say that this is going to be 1 plus i. That right there, um, let's just change the colour, because that just looks like i plus i. That right there is in Cartesian form. We could express this in polar form right here, or modulus argument, as finding now, and we'll, what we'll do, we'll just do a quick example. The value of r is the absolute value of the complex number. It's the square root of x squared plus y squared, or the distance from the origin. So what we've got then, we can write r is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So r is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which of course is going to be equal to root 2. The argument, remember, we're measuring from negative pi to positive pi, and we go anti-clockwise. So if we consider the, um, the argument just here, the principal argument is the inverse tangent, tan to the negative 1. So we can say theta is equal to tan to the negative 1 of 1 over 1, which of course is going to be pi by 4. So we could write now the complex number in the form r cos theta plus i sine theta, we could say z is going to be equal to root 2 cos of pi by 4 plus i sine of pi by 4. And that now is in polar form. In Cartesian form, it would be x 
plus IY. Okay, so this one in Cartesian form in X plus IY would just be 1 plus I. So there we go, 1 plus I. That's, that looks like a T. I don't know why I wanted to write an I. Uh, 1 plus I. So look, there we go. Cartesian form, polar form. The third form that we're going to look at is exponential form. And as we go through the course, we will look at the, the derivation of this as such. But for now, we will just simply state in exponential form, Z is equal to R e to the i theta okay and this is what we call now exponential form so exponential form and coming off the polar form there's not a lot of difference in terms of working between the two and in our later videos we're going to look at converting between the two but essentially all we've got now if we wanted to express this one that we've just done in exponential form, we could say that z is going to be equal to root 2 e to the i pi by 4. Okay, And that now is in exponential form. And again, this pi by 4 is the principal argument with multiples of 2 pi following on. So there's the take-home message, Cartesian form, polar form, and exponential form. And we'll look at, as stated, we'll look at the expansion of e to the x and how this comes about. But as an introduction video, we will just leave it as these three. We'll work through the section on complex numbers, look at some basic examples, and then move our work on.